Hi, it's Anne from The Useless Crafter. So today we're continuing to assemble Jasmine, who's 61 inches. And so it is in multiple pieces because it's so hard to, um, to arrange everything onto my mat because she is 61 inches. So to prep for um, sections is a lot easier. Otherwise, um, it would just take forever. So I apologize. I'm, I don't think I'm ever gonna do another 61 inch project. Um, maybe once a year I'll do it, just to remind myself not to do it. Um, it is just in a lot of pieces. And to be honest with you, I know I keep saying this and it sounds really negative, but um, she probably would have been at her best around 48 inches like my other toddler princesses at four feet. Um, 61, while her upper body looks really good, the bottom half isn't going to be as good, I don't think, because it's in so many pieces. Um, but we're going to power through this. We're going to do the next two sections, so it's really her midsection. So we're going to complete the midsection, add it to the head, okay? So that's this is what we did yesterday. Um, and I want to show you there's still more of her, one more piece of her hair down here and we will get started. All right, so I'm gonna move this out of the way. And so this is, this is the next two sections. So you can see this goes right below her neck. This is the top and then um, her holding onto her, um, part of her pants right here. Um, so what, what you should do is, I always lay it out right side up just so that I have all my pieces in place then what you wanna do is we always tape from behind because if we tape from the top, there's gonna to be sections where the colored pieces will not sit on top of and you're gonna be able to see the tape. So that's why we flip everything over and tape from the back and just remember that back side, it doesn't matter what it looks like because it's going to be glued onto the foam board. So that's kind of like why we do everything. Okay, so, um, I hate this part because I always mess up. <laughs> so let's flip everything over. All right, so that's my first flip. Um, and already I'm like very nervous. <laughs> this goes over here. This goes over here. All right? And this and this. Okay, that's kind of almost off the, okay. There. All right, so far so good. Um, regular scotch tape, what you wanna do is you wanna line up two pieces at a time. You pull one up and you line it against, line it up against the other one. And this one, because of there's a little gap right here, um, it's not as easy to line this up. So you just wanna do this piece first before you do the bottom piece. But you kinda see how I'm holding, using my fingers right there to hold it together. And I definitely didn't need that big of a piece, but that's okay. Now we'll do the bottom half of this. So again, just kind of push it up against so that it's as seamless as possible as we tape it. And I always do this. Okay. Now what's going to be important is always at the edge. I always tape it really well because that's, you just don't want it to be, um, you don't want any movement because the movement is what catches the light and that's when you see the seams the most. So if you can, even up here, just tape it a little bit better. Okay. All right, so let's do this piece to this piece. This one will be easier because you see the whole piece lines up. And this is another reason why it's good to do it. I know a lot of people don't like how I do my 11 by 11 um, squares at all flushed and then make like a huge grid of squares um, because it seems like they're not comfortable with using the X and Y coordinates. Um, but the reason why it is good <laughs> is because we line it up and everything, you know, can be pushed up against each other. So it's a nice straight line. You push it up you know you have the right pieces in the right places and exactly where it goes. What you don't want, for instance, is like this arm. If we didn't cut it right at the edge and we didn't know it went there, sometimes your pieces are gonna be like this and you don't know how to line it up. So it, it you know, there's a, 
a method to my madness, I swear. <laughs> All right, so let's tackle this piece right here and hold it together and take that first one. And then I definitely want to get this edge because I know that this is my um, this is my edge piece. There's nothing that's going to be covering on top of it. So I want to make sure that that seam stays put. Okay, and then I'm going to do this one. So this one, Ella and I, a little hole got cut right there. That's okay. Just hopefully we'll have something to cover it. If not, we'll figure it out. Okay. And this piece seems like it's a little off for some reason. It seems just a little bit bigger than it should be. That's so weird. It's like it's not lining up. How is that possible? Do you guys see what I'm seeing? So this is very weird. I've never, if I line it up here, then there's a gap right here. Oh, and there is a little gap right here. It's like this piece is too big. Hold on, let's measure this piece. It's 11 inches. So weird. Okay. So, wow, it's considerable. I don't know what to do. Hmm. See, this is why this project is cursed. <laughs> um, wow, I'm not sure what to do in this case. Okay, so I'm gonna line it up to the top and then um, kind of stop there and pause for a second. I'm gonna flip it over. I'm gonna leave this one unattached for now, okay? So let's flip this over. Actually, no. Let's keep it flipped like this because I want to attach it to her head. So let's see what happens when we do this. Okay. So we do want this to line up. I don't know what we're going to do about this little gap right here. I have never... I've never run into this issue, so this will be interesting. We'll fix it on the fly because that's all we can do. Okay, so now we're attaching her head to this piece. And you can see the rest of how how it was taped together. Um, all right, so we'll flip her over and see what we have. So I don't know. I don't know what to say about that. Okay, so let's put this down just so that we can see what is supposed to be here, right? So it's supposed to be her arm. Let's see how her arm looks. I and her hand so that's off the camera so i know you can't see that all right so let's see what we have here let's start piecing this together so here's her arm um this arm okay let me get her neck and her hair. Okay, and if you remember, I wanted to do glitter cardstock. So this is the other piece of her hair that we're gonna need to trim off. I think this piece right here and
and maybe just trim it right here so that it's completely cut off so that there's a definite end to her hair. So I think I'm gonna do this. I don't even know where that piece went. Um, and I'm gonna trim this piece right here. So it's going to go like this. Okay. Um, all right. So let's see what we have here. I'm so twisted around right now because she's sideways. <laughs> um, all right. Let's do pieces that I know I could do. So her neck definitely goes here. That goes there. This little sliver is her arm. Oh, she still has another piece of hair. Where does this go? That's this piece. Okay, there's another piece that goes here, which we're going to need to trim off that stuff. Um, okay. I'm telling you, I think my, my, I'm messing with my own head right now about how much I dislike this project. Um, okay. So you can see like her top half from here on up. I mean, she is, I think if I cut this off and did her like this, um, she, her top half was meant to be 61 inches because her face is one piece. Um, everything looks really good up top. It's the, um, the bottom half that kills me. Okay, let's see. We have fingers over here, which I don't need to put down. Okay, let's put down this piece. So her hair goes like that. Okay, let's see how this is gonna work for us. So the black gap is, oh, oh Jesus. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. You can blame my husband for that. I thought something was swinging down. I'm about to hit my head as <laughs> the extension cord. Okay. <laughs> Um, the black, the gap right there is almost covered. I think we'll be okay. I don't, I honestly, do, it must have been something that happened during my slicing or I don't even know. Um, but okay. We have that. Um, this little piece goes, so her arm. It's a little off here. It's so hard to tell. Um, it's like she's normally I just put her on the board and I take it off and kind of like eyeball everything. This is really hard to do with the pieces being so big. Um, I feel like I should just start taping some of this down, even though, oh, it's so risky. Because I just don't know what's going on over here. But I feel like we can definitely say this goes here. We know the hair goes down right here. 
because the hair fits definitely right here. So, oh. <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna show you a little bit and then I'm gonna have to take it offline because, and put it on the floor and kind of map it out because I don't know what's going on. <laughs> this might be one of those things that I completely take it offline, pick a different project to show you a big one because I don't, I don't like editing things because I, um, I know you guys run into issues and I sort of want to run into those issues and figure out how I would solve it myself so that you could see it. Um, but I just don't think with it being so big and I'm so close to it, I can't see if it's even or not. So I kind of need to just put this together on the floor. But I want to show you how I would do some of this, okay? So her hair, um, right now everything is going on to the black, regular black cardstock. So the cardstock, the background is 65 pound cardstock. I always wait till it goes on sale either at Joann's or Michael's. Um, and I, I used to do whatever, whether it's 110 or 65 pound, but now I'm starting to feel like with the 65 pound, my blade's not working as hard. So I always use 65 pound on the back because, <clears throat> excuse me, it's also going on a foam, foam board. So the quality of your cardstock there won't matter. My cardstock, my glitter cardstock, this is all Cricut. So I do wait for it to go on sale. The brown is not, this brown of her eyes is from Joann's open stock. I wait till it goes on 70% 70, 70 off and then I buy the, the big sheets. And I usually then buy the 12 by 24 sheets just to have and it's such pretty colors and it is really brilliant and vibrant and shimmery, all the good stuff that Cricut normally has. Um, but Cricut's limited in their colors. This is from their sampler package, their pastel sampler. It's sold out, but the colors are beautiful. It's the light blue, the light pink, a light green, beautiful. This is the shimmer paper. I will take a picture of it so that you guys know. I use this also for Queen B, the LOL doll. So it's a little bit darker. I don't know how, how much you can see on camera, but it's, it's, um, it's like a peachy brown. Uh, but there's color to it in the, it depends on the lighting. It does get darker. So I love this for her skin. Um, all right. So we have everything now I like to use double-sided tape and I also like to use the Tombow, um, permanent adhesive, like running it down. So that's going to be for like the thinner pieces for anything big. I do just grab my double-sided tape. So the hair I'm going to put down because I know for sure where it goes because it's a straight, there is no outline, it goes all the way to the edge. Now in the picture, if you're looking, because the, I got this file on Etsy, um, her hair piece right here was the light blue that matches her dress or her top. And I just felt like it was too much blue, so I wanted to make make it clear that it's for her, it's a tie for her hair so I did it in gold okay so that's down so if that's down actually this goes right up against it because it's also part of the background so I think okay so we can do this so when I'm doing this piece right here because I know where it goes I kind of fold it up I know I have flexibility with this cardstock because it's thick. It's not going to show any bends or bent to the paper. So I'm just going to do this for now. That way I know exactly where it's supposed to go. And see, then I know this needs to be tilted a little bit this way. I think this, does this go up? Okay, then we want to make sure we tape this part down okay so here um, and sometimes what I like to do with like this piece up here is get one of these glue dots these are perfect so I just grab it with my hand because I don't want to ruin the paper at this point but I put it at the tip that's gonna keep this whole thing down really really well A few more pieces here make sure your tape doesn't go past the edge because you're gonna see it against the black background okay all right so I think I'm ready to push this down 
And it's nice because this, I know it's gonna go straight down. So see, that's gonna stay down because of that little glue dot. I think I need one more right here. Okay, so that stayed down really, really well. Okay, so next, let's do this arm because we know exactly where the arm goes because it fits in with the hair curve right here. This little piece, so it tells me exactly where that arm goes. So, so let's put that one down. I'm just gonna start taping this up. And these little corners, it's nice to have the glue dot. I have a little piece right here. Gonna lift it up just a little bit. And it's super sticky. I love these glue dots. All right. Move this hair out of the way a little bit. Now, if you're, sometimes I will take out my glue gun to use um, to get things to stick. This paper will show your hot glue gun from behind. So it does change the temperature, makes it change a little bit. It's gonna rise a little bit on your skin. So just be, you know, get to know your materials. It's going to, um, you'll know which ones you can use which with. Um, okay, so I'm gonna trim this a little bit more to make it parallel. My hair is just sticking out a little bit. So I'm gonna grab the scissors and just cut it straight over. Because it goes all the way to the edge, so that gives me, there, it goes like that. So I'm gonna trim off this and this and this. I'm gonna leave some of it though. Let me see. I need to trim this off. I'm gonna follow the curve of this and trim it off. Okay, and and we can always trim off these later. But these right now are serving as little guideline marks for me for the rest of the piece. So I'm gonna leave it in for now. Okay, so we know that goes like that. And I need all the help I can get right now to piece this thing together. So. Okay, so that gives me So this shirt goes like this, which is interesting because I think I messed up on this then. But that's okay. All right. But that gives us still because of the outline, we still have some wiggle room, so it's okay. All right, so this shirt, I know it goes exactly like this because it matches the hair. So I'm gonna lift this up, start taping this down. And this right here, see how it's popping up? great spot for the glue dot. Okay. 
And you see once it's in, it's good. Same thing with this hair right here. I want a glue dot right there. It's so funny, I wanted to challenge myself. So my one year anniversary of doing YouTube videos was just on Friday, and I didn't even finish this for Friday. <laughs> I couldn't get myself to do it. I've been delaying this thing. This, this project has been forever. And if you followed my Design Space video, you'll know that I had to redo that so many times because after I finished recording, I went to save it and it didn't save. <laughs> I should have known, it was cursed from the beginning. Um, okay, so let's do this gold piece. This gold piece, um, I'm just gonna get scratch paper and then I'm gonna use my glue runner, the tape runner, and just make sure that I get it really good. You always wanna get those tips because those tips are what, you know, they, they kind of tend to move a little bit and stick up and kind of not look so good that way. There. All right, this little guy. And you see how I put it down? I mean, it's touching the board, but it's still, as long as you don't press it down, there's still wiggle room for you to make sure that you place it where you want to. And then once you press down, I mean, it's kind of stuck, but just know that you can gently put something down and still mess around with it. Okay, so this one, I definitely, I wanna get, I wanna get the ends. And you just wanna be careful that when you're using your scratch, scratch, scrap paper, um, on this one, it's gonna show the tape. So make sure that when you flip it over, you don't get any remnants of any other pieces from before. All right. Okay. So she is kind of down. I'm going to stop here because I need to know what to do with this gap. <laughs> um, we could put this arm down, so I'll put this piece down right now. That's not going to change. And I will definitely let you know how I modify this in the comments. Oh my gosh. Okay, um, let's get this. Now in the picture, this piece right here is connected to the arm, but there was a little indent right here from the crease of, because it wasn't a straight arm, it was kind of slightly bent. So I just made it a deliberate cut and cut it into two pieces. And that's how, to me, the arm looks seamless. It looks like this was always meant to be there. So when you're doing big pieces, you wanna see where you can make deliberate cuts. And I'm going to show you the difference now since I'm cutting this video short. I still want it to be full of tips and um, good content for you to be watching this, okay? I'm going to pull it down a little bit and I'm going to show you the top, okay? Now her hair, you can see this is one big piece, right? So there are three seams in her hair. With black glitter cardstock, it is really hard to see the seams. I mean, I have light coming down. You can't, I don't know if you can see it. Sometimes I have to feel it. So here's one seam right here, right? And then somewhere over here is another seam. Oh, right here. Right here is a seam and I have one more somewhere. Maybe it's just the two seams. So you can see for for the hair, I didn't want to 
I did for Cinderella. Cinderella, I did a deliberate part. And let me show you what that looks like. I'll be right there. So Cinderella, I made this a deliberate part. This was one whole piece, but it looked like you could part it right there. So I, like I said, I made it a deliberate decision to have a cut with the black showing, okay? When you're doing black on black, and it, I'm doing the black glitter cardstock, the deliberate cut does not look good. So, and I knew that if I had the seam, it would be very well hidden. So I just did a slice and then pushed it right up next to each other. So you can see it's right here and right here. You just can't see that at all. So you just gotta get to know your materials and know what you can and can't do. So with the black glitter cardstock, any dark colored glitter, like your dark green, your blues, and the reds, they will hide the seams really well. I'm gonna show you another one right now with Cinderella still. This is her skirt. And kind of like in the light, you can kind of see there's a seam right here. So her skirt, this part right here is in three pieces. And the other one is right here. This one I have a hard time seeing at all. It's, it's from touch that I can find it. So there's a straight line right here. And again, another one right here. This dark blue I knew was going to hide it well. I didn't want to do a deliberate seam because I felt like it didn't look natural for her skirt to be in three pieces. So, um, so you kind of just want to get to know your pieces like that, okay? Um, all right. I'm sorry. I hope this was still helpful. I'm going to try to piece it together and then take pictures and kind of right through this experience. So it'll be on my blog probably because I just don't think that I can do this video. I'll do another off the mat. If you want a good off the mat tutorial, I have a playlist that says intro to off the mat. It's going to walk you through the beginning, like the super easy one. And I think there's a more complicated one where like we do more um, tricks and stuff to like make it work at a bigger size. But I would say most of mine have tips and tricks throughout them. So, all right. Thanks guys. Uh, thanks for your patience. And um, I did have a comment yesterday that made me laugh. One person watched the whole 90 minute video of Design Space where they saw my reaction to when it didn't save. This is, this is the project. <laughs> it is worse than uh, giving birth. All right. Bye guys.